Director and co-writer Adam Reader brings us Woodland Grey. This is a slow burn folk horror movie with a kind of a psychological element to it as well. What is the story? It primarily focuses on two characters. We have a guy, a uh, kind of middle-aged guy, living out in the, uh, the woods, just living off nature, hunting, doing all that kind of stuff. He has a kind of a, a caravan, which is where he kind of sleeps and everything like that, but he is just wanting a life of solitude. And he comes across a, uh, a woman, a younger woman, who is injured. She's injured herself um, out going for a kind of a hike in the woods because she has some uh, personal issues and also a medical issue uh, that she's kind of dealing with and um, she you know, wants to go there to clear her head and what have you. But anyway, this guy kind of uh, rescues her ultimately and kind of brings her back to his camp. And once she is there, she discovers a, a kind of secret that this guy is keeping. Now, is it malevolent? You have to watch the movie and find out. Let's discuss. So what do I think works in this movie? So like I said, this is a slow burn movie and um, for the most part, obviously, it's uh, it's a pretty much effects free movie. It's really just a, a case of the interplay between the limited cast that you have on in this movie. But I, I'm pleased to say that one thing this movie does have is two interesting characters played by two decent actors. Um, so there are more characters than just the two of them, but they are in, in sort of smaller roles. So a lot of it is on these two. Uh, there's a third character which has a little bit of a, lot of a bigger role, but for the most part, it is these two characters uh, with about the bulk of the kind of the screen time. Um, yeah, but I thought they both of them have an interesting backstory. And the movie, I think, does a good job of peppering that in through the movie. Now, it's, this movie, a lot of information is revealed as it kind of goes on. So I have to be a little vague in regards to the synopsis there because I don't want to tell you stuff which happens obviously later on. Um, but you will get kind of information about the kind of the circumstances why both of these people are in these particular woods and things like that and their kind of personal sort of situations that have caused them some grief and, and, and things like that. And both of the both of the the uh, the actor who plays the the, the middle aged guy, the, the lady who plays the um, the younger woman, I think do a, a good job. Especially I think the the, the middle aged actor here uh, a really kind of quite harrowing performance. I will say uh, that I really felt this guy's kind of pain and anguish, and I really like the fact that they kind of um, uh, you're not quite sure about where he is on a kind of a morality scale, shall we say. Um, Things are revealed through the movie, and you know, it, it, it looks kind of bad at some point. But you think the guy's performance and his earnest kind of denial that he's doing anything wrong, for example, I think was really strong. And things mm, it's quite compelling. I'm actually kind of quite believing him, even though there's evidence to the contrary and things like this. So I thought that was uh, was superb. And I've got to say, I, uh, I to a point, and there is, there, there, I will emphasise to a point. I was actually kind of quite on board with this kind of story. It's somewhat of a mystery about what's kind of going on. And I had my theories while I was watching it. And if, this, and if a film is kind of challenging you and kind of thinking, oh, you know, you know maybe, maybe what's going on, you're thinking, oh, I reckon it's this. I was wrong. Um, I think it's good. It's keeping my brain engaged. I'm engaged in that kind of story, even though it is a slower burn story, primarily with kind of just characters kind of talking in the woods. That's kind of what this movie is. It's very little in regards to anything flashy in this film, but that kind of story did kind of keep me engaged. And because we have this um, backdrop all set in this kind of forestry area, Again, it, it, there's some great cinematography, great use of kind of natural light and things like this. Uh, firelight, which I think kind of uh, emphasizes some of the kind of the scenes and things like that. So the cinematography here, although I wouldn't say it was outstanding, you know, it's it's good. It's certainly above average cinematography without kind of being anything kind of too flashy, if that makes sense. Where I think this may be forced in a little bit is, um, I think it gets a little bit lost in its mythology. And I don't think the writing is as clever as it thinks it is. Now, in regards to the mythology, without kind of saying anything really about the, the, the plot really, I would suggest this movie is a similar vein to the Blair Witch mythos. Now, I don't mean the actual movies itself, 
because this movie is not really like it's not a found footage film and it's not a it's not a horror in the traditional sense in the fact that there's um you know jump scares and that kind of stuff or really scary moments but there is a certainly a, a presence that is involved and um you know it's it, it's intent may be you know not of the known world and you don't really know where it's going and things like this um but I was kind of like, it reminded me so much of some of the sequences and some of the mythos behind the Blair Witch. It's particularly the kind of the last movie, actually, uh, certainly involved in the forest. And the other kind of thing I would say is, again, without kind of giving you any specifics, think kind of like woodland spirits and things like that. And that's all I'll kind of really say on, on where it's kind of going. But the interesting thing, I'm going to go back into positive now. Uh, the interesting thing I, I, I would say is that um, I've seen a lot of folk horror movies and a lot of it leans very heavily into that. But I would say this actually, it kind of leans, it has this folk horror element to it, but it plays more like a psychological film in a way, which I found was interesting. But anyway, uh, what doesn't work for me, I guess going back to that, um, I think the movie does get a little bit kind of like too obscure and stuff, particularly in the kind of the third act, where I gotta say it started to lose me a little bit. Um, I thought I knew where the movie was going and I was kind of like, I, I kind of understand what the movie is trying to tell me. And then we kind of get into the third act and it just gets a little bit too much with it in regards to um, some of the, the, the weird kind of events that seem to be happening and it's kind of, I feel like this, and I was watching it the third act and I was thinking, this is going to be one of those movies that it's going to be a little unsatisfying when you're kind of watching it. And I'm not going to tell you if that was the case or not, but I was kind of watching this and thinking, I don't know if this is going to be able to wrap all this up uh, by the time this movie ends up finishing. And you're kind of thinking, well, what have I just kind of watched? So I've got to be honest, I think the actual third act is a little damaging. And I think some of the writing here needed to be a little bit sharper. Again, I'm going to be vague, but our female character, for example, she has a medical condition, and I found it, uh, to be honest, nearly ludicrous that this woman is going to go on a uh, uh, extended hiking trip on her own without anyone knowing where she is with her medical condition. It just seems like implausible that any sane person would kind of do that. And then we also have, for example, uh, again, it seemed like writing for convenience. We have a, a character, uh, one of the two characters, who has a sudden change of um, their mind in the kind of around the middle of the middle of the film in regards to a particular and a sort of a threat, shall we say? And it just seemed like this has gone from one extreme to the other in this kind of a splink of an eye. It didn't kind of ring true to me. So some of the writing here, I did have some kind of problems with. Um, so. It's still, I would say, an interesting movie. It does kind of lose it, I think, in that third act. I think the third act doesn't, I feel like it doesn't really know where the movie wants to go. It ends up having like, lots of kind of like, uh, obscurities and kind of flashbacks and visions and possible kind of hints about what's kind of going on without really um, having a strong narrative, which I think, to be honest with you, until that point, it did, and it kind of like it, it kind of just loses it a little bit in that kind of third act. I've tried to be give you some idea about maybe what to expect, but um, it wasn't as strong the third act. That being said, I think um, you know the movie is going to be a little bit too slow, a little bit uneventful for kind of some people because there is no set piece in this. There's no kind of like gore. There's no scares necessarily. It's just a kind of like a. Uh, somewhat of a creepy atmosphere at times and and some you know some unsettling imagery without necessarily del going into true sort of scares and ultimately you think mm, what has actually happened and you think maybe not as much as I think you know it could have, could have happened um, but it's it's worth a watch for those of you who like a dramatic style kind of um, movie I don't think it's necessarily one you don't ever kind of watch a second time, I, I personally feel. So therefore I'll give this movie a 5 out of 10. It's certainly not a bad film, it's worth a watch if you like slower burn movies. But it ain't going to be for everyone, I don't think it's going to change anyone's mind. Uh, 5 out of 10, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.